With the Uncharted movie on its way, it's a safe bet to say that they'll return to the franchise within the games as well. They're probably just biding their time and making sure they get it right. However, I wanted to look at the Uncharted game that we deserve for PS5. So here's my PS5 pitch room. Enjoy. <laughs> Our story starts with Nathan Drake lecturing Sam as he helps carry luggage onto Sully's plane. Remember, no drinking. She's still not old enough yet. Technically I am. You only have to be 16 to drink in Italy and I hear they have the best wine. No drinking. Remember, as soon as we're done in England, we'll be flying out to meet you. Come on, have I ever given you a reason not to trust me? Right, send my love to Chloe, I'll let you know when we land. Let's get this thing moving. I'm not getting any older. The plane takes off. Nate looks concerned but Elena reassuringly says she'll be fine. She's our daughter. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. So we're walking around the streets of Rome with Cassie, Sam, Sully and Vicky there. And there'll be a few points that you can interact with that are highlighted along the way. Things like shop windows, traders, landmarks. But at some point you realise that Sully is actually missing after a couple minutes into it. You'll come out of one of those interactions and Sully will no longer be there. This is our first chance to use the new mechanic. Vicky has the ability to sniff people out and this will be important as it will help plan stealth moves along the way later in the game. As the scent starts to highlight the trail, Vicky leads us up into a cutscene where Sully's been cornered down an alley and dragged into a van. Sam yells at Cassie to run while he charges at the attackers, but one of the attackers brushes past and starts to give chase to her. This is where we get to navigate some of the usual skills that we know from Uncharted, you know, the running and the climbing and stuff. Eventually you'll be chased into a dead end. It's here that we learn that Vicky can distract or intimidate enemies. I really want to have Vicky the dog as a key part in this story, so I think having a few abilities that she can do is very important. Using that distract and intimidate ability that actually gives Cassie the time to climb to safety and Sam actually catches up. Now you can switch between Cassie and Sam. Similar to sort of GTA, I just thought it'd be a nice mechanic because I don't really want Cassie too much in the action but I still want her a big part of this story. Switching over to Sam allows you to go back over the sort of fight moves that you can do in the game and once he takes out this dude in a suit he actually drops a business card. Later at the hotel, Cassie can't understand why anyone would want to do that to a sweet old man and Sam explains that Sully's been around the block enough times he's probably made a few enemies in his long lifespan. She says they need to contact the police but Sam points out the men who took Sully are likely mafia and would probably have local police in their pocket. He says he needs to go to the vineyard on the business card and see if he can get Sully back but Cassie insists that she doesn't feel safe at the hotel and wants to come with him. It's at that point that he actually gets a call from Nate to which he has to lie and say everything's fine and that they landed safely? Cassie? Oh no, she's asleep from the jet lag. Um, I'll get her to call you in the morning. He brushes it off and Cassie says, if I don't get to come with you, I'm telling them exactly what happened. So reluctantly, Sam takes Cassie and Vicky with him, but tells them to wait in the car the next day once they've actually approached this massive sort of villa, vineyard setting. I wanted something really huge and nice to look at, you know, but with a lot of ground that you'd actually have to move through to get to the villa itself. But of course, Cassie doesn't want to stay in the car. It's at this point that we can actually go back to switching between Cassie and Vicky or Sam. Using Cassie and Vicky, you can sniff out where guards' trails have been, allowing her to move around, but also distract those guards so Sam can take them out. Or you can just take Sam's route and actually just take them all out in stealth mode anyway. At this point in time, I'd like to note that Sam's really not trying to just kill people because he's trying to be a good uncle, you know? And it's not like he can just walk up into a mafioso's base. So I've kind of made it in this game that it's like Cassie is the stealth element and Sam is the run and gun. You can't have an Uncharted game without that run and gun element. But I also wanted to work Cassie into being a main part of the story and a playable character at the same time. When you reach the villa, you'll notice that there's a window open small enough for Cassie to get through but not for Sam to get through. She'll have to climb up into the actual villa and you'll realize how heavily guarded it is between her and the door she needs to open to get Sam inside. However, once you get Sam inside, it can go all guns blazing, you know? You're in the middle of it here now, he's got protective uncle mode in and he's going to do anything he can to keep her alive. 
Vicky hints that she can smell Sully's scent and this will lead you to a wine cellar as the scent goes cold. However, this is where the first proper puzzle of the game, you know, Uncharted loves puzzles and you got to throw some puzzles in. So I thought I'd try and throw a puzzle in here, there and everywhere. You got to reposition the kegs and the bottles in the right order and it will open up a secret door that will allow you into this massive underground stash of illegal treasure and no Sully. Of course there's no Sully, but quite worryingly enough, there's a trail of blood on the floor. Sam and Cassie take note of all of the things around them. There's loads of like old statues and coins and things like that, pieces of text and stuff. But surprisingly enough, they agree that it's not actually Roman despite being in Italy, it's actually Greek. And using this information from around the room and piecing clues together, again, another sort of mini puzzle, like on the mafia's desk, you put together maps and such, you'll realize that they're taking Sully to Greece. So they decide they need to head to Greece as well and get Sully back before Nate and Elena are any the wiser. Now I know that I haven't had massive set pieces yet but we're sort of getting to that when we get to Greece. As we move into Greece we definitely get some of these more sort of like big familiar set pieces in the way of like you know Athens and old Greek ruins. It's here you'll be sort of following the mob taking them out and you know really sort of getting some more clues which will eventually lead you to Plato's Academy ruins. It's here that we actually find Sully but also the head of the mob. We can see they've been using sort of like old astronomy and the maps to sort of place together a certain location and at this point we see the mob boss really turn on Sully being like I guess I won't be needing you anymore. We have to do something. Sam looks to Cassie and is like remember those shootouts we used to have on the beach with the water guns? Yeah she says. He hands her a gun. I know, I know, like Sam being completely irresponsible. It was going to happen at some point. Good, if this goes wrong, you get out of here alive and you call your parents, okay? Sam steps into view of the mob boss. You let him go and we'll just go our separate ways. Sam, put the gun down, Sully says. This isn't your fight. Vinny, you got what you wanted. Now please leave my friend out of this. What I wanted? What I wanted? What I wanted is to see you suffer, old man. This is between me and you, Sully replies. Not anymore, it isn't, Sam shouts, but all of a sudden a gun is pressed to Sam's back and we hear a gunshot. Sam looks back in complete shock as the man holding the gun to him falls to the ground and Cassie stood there with a gun in her hand. Cassie, he says, as another gunshot rings out. Sam then falls to the ground with Sully screaming out, Sam! Sully rushes over to Sam's side. Cassie drops to her knees completely in shock of what's just happened. Take her, the boss says to his men. Cassie doesn't resist. Vinny, don't do this. Please, Sully says. Yeah, it's all heating up now, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's, it's getting there, man. I've, I've been thinking about this. It's getting there. We find Sam patched up regaining consciousness on Sully's plane with Sully on the phone to Nate. You can hear Nate and Elena shouting, even though you're not close to the phone. Sully tells Nate he knows where they're going and that he'll send the coordinates over straight away and that we'll meet there. He's clearly distraught and blames himself. But then he has to bring Sam up to speed, who's still recovering, you know. What did he even want with you, Sam says. He's my son, Sam. He wanted revenge for all of the time I wasn't there for him. He knew about my life and every adventure I had, all the money I made and all the money I lost. I didn't even know he existed, but he found clues to Atlantis and just couldn't put them together. I helped him find it, though. It's real, Sam. Atlantis is real, and if he gets his hands on it, he'll have enough money to take over most of Europe's criminal underworld and the black market. No man should have that much power, Sam. We've got to do something. Plus, even worse, he has Cassie. Wait, Atlantis? Is, is He's your son? He has Cassie? I'm gonna kill that son of a bitch! She saved you, Sam. Yeah, well, now I'm gonna save her. How do we get to Atlantis? We head to Spain. Spain? You'll see. They arrive at Donana National Park, which is in southern Spain, where there's a huge dig happening from Vinny's crew. I don't know how this guy's got so much connections. He's mafia, you know what I mean? He calls in the contractors, he, get it, he gets it done. He's a criminal, okay? Sully and Sam sneak in. It's this part of the game where the game is just pure run and gun. There's no need for puzzles or anything like that. You've tackled most of that in Greece, right? Okay, the, the Greece chapter's fairly long. But now it's like running like this, it's time to save Cassie. We switch between them as we storm the city to get to a huge temple-like structure which sits in the middle of it all sort of floating because there used to be water around it but where the water is is now just steep drops into the bottom of the earth. Not lava but you know what I mean. And it's here, once you've fought your way here, that you find Vinny with Cassie there shaken but unharmed. 
Now this is the boss fight right here, but pretty much with a recovering Sam and an old Sully, they get their asses kicked. They're no, they're no match for this, this young man, but Cassie breaks free and tries to attack him and is also thrown to the ground. We go into another cutscene. Vinny's just there like stomping on Sam. Sam's saying like, get out of here, Cassie. Sully's begging him to stop and he's like, this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted to see you suffer. I bet this is another one of your kids you never looked at just going mental. At this point, Cassie gets up and tries to run away, but Vinny just grabs her, pulls out a knife, holds it to her neck and says, you're going to watch her die first. A gunshot out of nowhere. The knife drops onto the floor as it just clips his arm. Step away from my daughter. At this point, right, Nathan Drake's theme just kicks it, you know. Du, 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 du. Straight up, you know what time it is. Nathan Drake standing right there with a pistol in hand. Elena by his side with a gun in hand as well. Vinny, still holding on to Cassie, edges to one of the steep drops. Another move and I'll jump. Sully gets up, picking the knife that Vinny just dropped and stabs it into the back of Vinny, right? His own son. His own son stabs him. All three of them go over the edge. Elena and Nath run towards the edge. Sully is hanging on by a thread with Cassie hanging onto his leg. They pull him up. Elena, Nate and Cassie reunite. Let's play Happy Families back at home, please. You lot have left me a lot of mess to clean up. Chloe interrupts them all. Nadine and her shoreline mates have secured anyone that's left alive, and the Spanish authorities are on their way. I suggest we should get out of here, she says, while picking Sam off the floor. And Sam's all like, you know, he's like, oh, did you? so you did get my love. Shut up, Sam. That's the end of the story. Now, why did I put Atlantis in Spain? It's because there's a lot of speculation that there was a place called um, Tartessos that a lot of people really feel like might have been Atlantis. And if it was not Atlantis, it's where the people of Atlantis ended up once Atlantis had sunk. But there's still a lot of investigation going on in that. I think it's just nice to move a bit across Europe with this story. We start off in Italy, we go to Greece, and then we go to Spain. It's a nice sort of spectrum. But I really wanted to bring in the family vibe. Yes, I could have had any sort of enemy for this game, just a generic enemy, someone from sort of Nate's past or something like that. But I thought what would be cool is to bring in someone from Sully's past, a son that he never even knew he had, a bastard child that's just completely mad at someone like Nate for robbing all of those fatherly moments from him, you know, and wanting to get back at Sully. I think it's good to use Sam and Cassie as opposed to bringing in, I didn't want to have any point where you could play as Nate or Elena, I didn't think that would work, but I really did like how the Lost Legacy brought Sam into the fold, so I just thought that would be a good way of doing it as well, and it's a little bit of a sort of redemption for Sam further, you know, just trying to prove that he can be a good person, as we know he can be, um, and he still sort of paid the price for his mistakes in this, you know, he got shot up and kicked and stuff, um, but yeah, I, I just really thought... If you're going to make a game like this, if you are going to do it, let's let's continue on that family vibe. And at the same time, while I wanted to have Cassie as a playable character, I didn't want to have her like just a miniature Nathan Drake going guns blazing or anything like that. I think there's a way to use her, not make her completely older so it's like a, you know, Uncharted does Tomb Raider kind of vibe or anything like that. No, no, no. Just have her a main part of the story. A little bit of a homage to Naughty Dog's approach when it comes to The Last of Us anyway. But yeah, I just think it's a very, very good way that you use her for certain dynamics like stealth and moving around and distractions but you can still go guns blazing by playing as Sam and later on playing as Sully so um, that's my approach and that's what I'd love to see from an uncharted sequel game you know on the PS5 okay that's my approach. I'd love to know your thoughts and feelings on it. Originally, it was going to be Sully's big score. Just Sully goes on one last job but goes missing. But I thought this is a better way of sort of doing it. And it just starts off as what would be a sort of family holiday where they all plan to meet up later going completely wrong. I also wanted to bring back Chloe and Nadine in this because it's just nice to know that Nadine got a hold of Shoreline later down the line and that her and Chloe are still friends. So I thought that would be good, especially with... Um, Nate and Elena being out in England uh, for their holiday before they came over to the other part of Europe. I just think it works very, very well um, that you tie them all in together. I would have even thrown Cutter in there, but I just thought it would be overkill, you know? So yeah, that is my PS5 pitch room for Uncharted The Next Generation. That's what I'm calling it, baby. I just decided that part. Thank you for listening.